This video is going to be jam-packed with 20 Excel Pro keyboard shortcuts and I'm not talking about shortcuts like Ctrl C and Ctrl Z. The shortcuts in this video usually take Excel Pro's years to accumulate but I've condensed them into one video for you. Now I kind of feel like I'm giving away my Excel secrets. I've also included an Excel file with each of the shortcuts documented and if you want more there's a link in the video description where you can download our PDF containing 239 Excel keyboard shortcuts. All right, let's get started. One of the most annoying things in Excel is accidentally using the arrow keys inside a dialog box only to find the focus is still on the worksheet cells. And it's particularly annoying because it's too late once you've pressed the arrow keys to easily undo the additional cell reference that's been added. The solution is to press F2 before you use the arrow keys. And if you take note in the bottom left in the status bar, you can see when I press F2, it changes from point, which is what it currently says, to edit. And now I can move my arrow keys happily without messing up my cell reference. Now this applies to all dialog boxes, not just charts like I have here. One of the most common tasks is copying and pasting. We all know that to copy is control C and to paste is control V. But one of the most common paste tasks I perform is paste values. Now the official keyboard shortcut for paste values is control alt V then V and then enter. Now I don't know about you, but I reckon you need to be a contortionist to press Control, Alt and V with one hand. And that's why the original keyboard shortcut, which is Alt and then E, then S and then V for values is far easier. And then simply press enter. Now you can do it with one hand. And even if you can't touch type after a few practices, you don't even need to look at the keyboard. Once you know the shortcut for Paste Special, the other options are easy. Another favourite of mine is Paste as Formulas. So Alt E S to open the Paste Special and then F for Formulas. It's easy to remember as well. Now I should point out while we're here that if you want to use any of the other keyboard shortcuts in the Paste Special dialog box, you simply look for the underlined letter. So for example, Formats is T, Comments is C, and data validation is N. In this case, I want to paste formulas, so it's F and then enter. Selecting columns and rows is dead easy. Control space selects a column and shift space selects a row. Now, if you have multiple cells selected prior to pressing the shortcuts, you're going to get multiple rows if you press shift space. Or if you have multiple cells selected across columns and press control space, you get all of the columns selected. So now that you've selected columns or rows, you can easily insert them with control plus. Now that's the plus sign on the numeric keypad. If you want to use the plus sign that shares the equal sign, then it needs to be control shift and plus. And to delete columns, it's control minus. Likewise with rows. So if I wanted to select a row, I can control plus to insert that row and control minus to delete it. We can also insert individual cells or groups of cells by first selecting the cell and then control plus. In this case, we get a new dialog box, which allows us to choose whether we want to shift the cells down or to the right. Here we can also choose to insert an entire row or an entire column. So let's say we want to shift cells down. I'm just using my arrow keys to choose which option and then press enter. Likewise, control minus will delete a cell. So I can shift cells up or to the left and again, delete entire rows or columns. So I'm going to shift cells back up and press enter. Control A will select a contiguous range of cells. For example, here I just had one cell selected and Control A selects them all, including these totals down here. It also works if you have some cells that are empty. So here I have almost an empty column and with any cell selected, Control A selects the entire table. Control A again selects the entire worksheet. Now Control A will stop and there's a break 
in the entire table. So if I delete that row there and then control A, it only selects up to that break. Likewise, if I had a whole column that was empty and then I control A, it only selects up to that empty range of cells. Now, sometimes you don't want to select the whole table. Perhaps you only want to select up to row 13. In that case, holding control and shift and then down arrow selects the whole column as long as the cells have data in. And then the right arrow with control and shift still selected selects across the columns. And then I can release control and then just up arrow or back arrow to deselect rows and columns that I don't need. Likewise, I can include more columns just holding shift and my arrow keys. Similar to selecting cells, you can also use control A to select objects on a worksheet. Objects can be images, charts, shapes like I have here, form controls, smart art, basically anything that floats above the grid. All you need to do is select one object with your mouse, which I have done here with the blue item, and then control A will select them all. If you want to deselect any objects, hold the shift key or the control key and click on the object you don't want selected. Most Excel users know that you can left click and drag to move a cell or range of cells or even a whole column or row. But not many know that if you hold down shift at the same time and then left click and drag, that it will insert that row when you release the mouse. Likewise, we can duplicate by holding control and you get the plus sign beside the mouse and shift, left click and drag. Now I'm going to add a row and insert it. So shift will insert, control shift will add. And this works for columns as well. And you can select a whole range. So I could control shift and insert these columns here, or I can just shift and insert them. So control shift copies and shift inserts. Now for some Excel users, knowing this tip is even possible is a tip in itself and the keyboard shortcut will be the icing on the top. So what I'm talking about here is filtering by cell value. So we can right click, filter, and filter by selected cells value. At the moment, I have the brand adventure work selected. So we'll select that. And now my table is filtered only for the brand adventure works. So let me undo that. The keyboard shortcut for this is the menu or application key and then E and V. You can see the letter is underlined in the menu. So V for value. And now I've filtered by brand. Now it's handy to know that the menu key will work in lots of areas. It's effectively the same as the right click of your mouse. So you can use that when you're working with charts or pivot tables, anything really, the menu key will bring up the equivalent of the right click. And you'll find the menu key is on the right hand side of your keyboard, usually immediately to the left of the control key. Pro users typically have multiple Excel workbooks open at one time and switching between them is dead easy with control and tab and control shift tab will take you back to the previous sheet. Similarly, we can use control page up and page down to scroll through the different worksheets in our workbook. Now you're not a pro user if you don't use Excel tables. To quickly format your data in an Excel table, I like to use control T, T for table, it's easy to remember. Brings up the dialog box. My table does have headers, so we'll leave that checked and I'll click OK, or you can press Enter. Now the official shortcut for formatting as a table is control L, but that requires two hands, so I like control T instead. Now data entry isn't a common task for the Excel Pro, but we all need to copy data down from the row above from time to time. And the easiest way to do this is with control D. And we can select multiple cells and copy them all in one go, control D. I like to remember it because D is for duplicate. Now, Control D also works to copy objects, so charts, images, shapes, and other objects. 
simply select one of them and Control D and you get another one. Another option for copying is Control R. It will copy across to the right. Now before you ask, Control L does not copy to the left. Control L will insert a table. If you work with objects a lot, like charts and shapes like I have here, then you'll find the Alt key is super handy. When you hold down Alt and left click and drag, you can see the object is snapping to the grid and that's really useful for aligning your objects. It'll also work when you resize it. So now I can resize it perfectly to the grid behind. So that's Alt while you left click and drag or to resize. As soon as you release Alt, you can move the object around as usual. Another key I like to use when I'm working with objects is the Shift key. So if I wanted to keep this object aligned to its current horizontal location, I simply hold Shift and as long as my mouse doesn't veer too far off the track, it will stay aligned horizontally. Likewise vertically and as long as my mouse doesn't veer too far off the track, it will stay vertically aligned. But you can see there I'm moving it too much, but if I just keep it roughly in the right place, then Shift will keep it aligned to its original position. Another shortcut I use all the time is Control 1. It opens the format pane. Now it doesn't matter whether you've got an object selected or a cell, Control 1 will open the relevant dialog box or format pane for the item or object that you have selected. So if you were working with a pivot table, Control 1 is going to open the format pane for the pivot table. So it's handy for cells, charts, shapes, images, anything you want to format, Control 1 is going to open the formatting options. Now the official keyboard shortcut for redo is Control Y, but I prefer the F4 key. There's only one key to press and it's just quick and easy. So I can quickly reapply the formatting. But F4 also applies absolute references. So if we're working in a formula, I can click inside the formula bar or in the cell in edit mode and pressing the F4 key will apply absolute references. Now before I do it, just notice that I've only selected the 2 from the first reference and the D in the second reference, but when I press F4 it will apply the absolute referencing to the whole reference. So you don't need to have the whole cell reference selected. I'm pretty lazy, if I can get away with just selecting a bit of it then that's what I'm going to do. Now F4 again will remove the absolute reference from the columns but leave the rows. F4 again will apply it to the columns and not the rows. F4 again removes it all together and so we're back to how we were originally. So the first F4 is going to apply absolute referencing to the rows and the columns. You can just keep pressing it to toggle through the different options. You can also just apply it to one of the cell references and not the other. Just depends where you select. So remember F4 for repeating, formatting and things like that. I like to use it for formatting charts and also for absolute referencing. Excel pros frequently use named ranges and name formulas. So it's fitting that we want a quick way to insert those names into our formulas. So we can start a formula and then press the F3 key. It brings up a list of our names available and I can just use the arrow key to select the one that I want and press enter. It's inserted it into the formula. Now all I need to do is press enter to finish it. Let's say that I wanted to add tax to this amount here. So we'll do it in the cell below. I'm going to start my formula. I need to take this value, multiply it by the tax rate. Now that's a name that I have. I can't quite remember what I called it. So I'm going to F3 to open the names. Use my arrow keys. There's my tax rate name. Press enter and enter again. And that's calculated the tax. When you inherit a new workbook, it can be really handy to quickly get an overview of where the formulas are. One way we can do this is with the keyboard shortcut control and the graph accent or backtick key as it's also known. Now this is usually in the top left of your keyboard and it shares the key with the tilde symbol. So I'm going to control and backtick and now it's showing me the formulas 
It hasn't got rid of them, it's just shown me the formulas rather than the result. But notice it's also removed the date formatting from column A and the number formatting from column C. So I like to use this sometimes to check if dates have been entered correctly because in column A what we see are the date serial numbers. And if I press Control and back tick again, it reverts back to how it was before. So it's just a quick way to see all your formulas, but also remove any formatting that's on the sheet. Now we pro users don't do a lot of data entry, but when we do, we want it to be quick and consistent. And that's why the alt and down arrow key is super handy because it brings up this instant drop down list. It's based on the items that are in the column already. So I can simply use my arrow key. And then when I've found one I want, press enter and it enters it for me. Now this is one of my most used shortcuts to quickly insert a sum for a column or row or even a whole table. So Alt equals is going to insert a sum for the cells that it detects either directly above or to the right or even to the left. It's detected the values above and I press enter and there's my sum. Now I can apply it for a whole row, select the cells first, Alt equals. This time I didn't even need to press enter. Likewise for a column, Alt equals, and it inserts my sums for me. But it will also do it for a whole table. So I just select all the cells, including the row and column that I want the totals in, and then Alt equals, and it's inserted the formulas for me. We can see them in the formula bar. Like I said, pro users rarely do any data entry, but from time to time, we all need to enter the date or the time. And when we do, I like to use control and then the semicolon, and that enters the date. Or if I need the time, control shift and semicolon again, and there's my time. Now this is picking up the time from your PC clock. So if it doesn't look right there, then you need to go into your PC's settings. Now there are a couple of other tips that I want to add. I've already done 20, but indulge me a moment here because these are a few more that are super handy. F12 will open the save as dialog box. F7 for spell check, and that's essential if you're creating reports. No one wants to send out a report with typos in it. F5 will open the go to dialog box or control G for short, and then alt S for special. And in here you can access all the go-to options. And hyperlinks is another one I use a lot. And control K is the shortcut for hyperlinks. Now control K will work in other programs as well. So I use that all the time. And my very last tip is that you don't always have to start a formula with equals. You can just use the plus sign. So for example, I could add 10 days to this date and reference it using the plus sign and I press enter. Now, if I go back to that cell, you'll see Excel has added the equal sign in front of the plus for me. Now this is a backward compatibility feature from Lotus 123. Well, that wraps up my 20 plus pro keyboard shortcuts. I'd love for you to post a comment letting you know which shortcut made you react like this. And if you have a pro tip, please share it. And don't forget to download the file for this lesson. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I post my next video. And please share it with your friends who also love keyboard shortcuts. Thanks for watching.